G'day ZGD here, back with another guide for Path of Exile's Ascendancy Expansion. Today I have for you guys a build template that is going to be a great way to start the new Parandus League in the Ascendancy Expansion. Hardcore viable and beginner friendly, as well as being able to kill Merciless Cesaro underleveled with completely self-found gear. Not to brag, not to brag. I tested this build on the Alpha server and found it tanky, fun to play, and able to destroy the leveling process with ease, thanks to its synergy with the Spark Orb of Storm's leveling meta I showcased in an earlier video. You can check that out in the description below. This time I've made my starter build recommendation flexible enough to be played with a ton of different spells instead of just the one like I normally do. Stormcall, Ball Lightning, Shock Nova, Ice Nova, Glacial Cascade, Flame Blast, and even Magma Orb. This build is able to do this as it has a very strong and efficient but generalized passive tree as an AoE elemental spellcaster. So basically, anything that has an element and is an AoE spell, you can use with this build. This build is done as a Templar Hierophant because the Templar starting location allows us to build a really tanky and solid general AoE spellcaster and because you level faster with no pants on. The Hierophant Ascendancy class offers extremely cheap gearing with the Illuminated Devotion Keystone node from its Ascendancy class that turns your helmet, gloves and boots into pseudo five links. It also gives you great survivability thanks to the Divine Guidance node, which gives you 10% of damage taken from mana before life. We actually combine this with the Mind of a Matter Keystone as well to bring this amount to 40%. That means that only 60% of all of the damage that you actually take goes to your life, the rest of it goes to mana. Gearing this build couldn't be simpler or cheaper, and as I mentioned earlier, this is perfectly doable self-found, which I was forced to do on the alpha. Primary stats are of course life and resist, but any mana or mana region you get also has the added benefit of adding to your effective life total as well. You don't need a 5 or a 6 link chest or weapon either, just 4 link your helm, boots and gloves. Weapons can be whatever you want, just get spell damage, cast speed and mana where possible. This build is non-crit as well, so no need to invest in expensive crit spell gear. Don't worry about lacking damage though, thanks to the new Elemental Overload Keystone, we get 40% more damage multiplier. And with most of these setups, it's actually pretty damn easy to keep this up all the time as well. As for which base armor types to use, we're extremely flexible there too. Armor, ES, hybrids of the two, and even Evasion ES are all fine to use, just rock the best of what you find. Although you need nothing to start, there's still a decent amount of scalability with gear here as well. You'll be using your main skill in your helmet for the 20% resistance penetration granted by the Hierophant class, and you can eventually upgrade into a unique helmet that provides some other benefits. Two good examples are Joffrey's Crest, which increases the level of all your gems in the helmet by one, or Rhyme Gaze, which effectively gives you an added concentrated effect link, turning your pseudo 5 link into a pseudo 6 link. A less obvious side benefit here is that you aren't at all reliant on having a 5 or 6 link chest armor. There are a ton of good unique body armors that you can use, and they're typically way more expensive to buy them linked, which most builds need to do. But with this build, you can for example buy a Carcass Jack and gain its massive AoE buffs at a very affordable price. So now let me run you through the passive skill tree and leveling route. Alrighty guys, so let me show you through the passive tree, I'll explain some things as I show you the leveling process. So first up, pick the Templar, start, get some damage, move all the way through the life, and that'll give you a very nice start for the leveling process. We're going to be rushing to Elemental Overload, but we'll head up this way because we'll be getting this life later. I recommend grabbing Agility to help with running Herald of Ice and then later Arctic Armor, and grab Elemental Overload. Now this is very easily kept up with Orb of Storms. If you're using Spark Orb of Storms leveling, which I recommend, this will be up nearly all the time while leveling. Spark and Orb of Storms hit enemies so quickly and they cast so fast that it's very easy to keep this up. Now I actually quite like getting Mental Rapidity here as well. It's a very good cast speed boost and the mana regeneration helps out a little bit as well. From here you want to go into Witch, grab the Life for cool preparation. And then you're going to want to head over to the right here into the AoE cluster, grab all of this. Come down into Deep Wisdom, grab the Life and Mana Nodes. This does a good way towards, you know, just this with Clarity is enough to really keep your mana up. The Templar start, plus the Mana in here, plus Mental Rapidity, does a really good job of maintaining your manas, and I didn't have any mana problems while leveling this build. Now I actually quite liked from this point ducking down into here, grabbing this Life and Mana Cluster, and then grabbing Mind Over Matter. This should be around the time where you get the Mind of a Matter Keystone in the Hierophant class as well, in Cruel. So doubling that up and getting the 40% total means that you'll be really tanky from here on out. And then from here we head over into the Shadow side. We'll be skipping this stuff just now, but we'll be grabbing that later. So head up this way, you can grab more Dexterity if you need to, but usually just using like a Jade Amulet or something is enough there. We move into the Shadow area through the very nice Shadow Start nodes. The little bit of crit chance on this node helps with maintaining um, Elemental Overload uptime. And 
then down into the car speed disk there, completing that shadow start area, at least for the beginning. So from here, it's pretty much a case of getting the rest of the life. So we grab that and that. We grab the rest of the car speed just here. Some more very nice mana nodes up from the witch section. And you'll notice that we have very good access to jewels. So at this point, you should be looking to find some decent, you know, three stat jewels that help out life, uh, getting some mana where possible, getting some uh, damage that relates to your spells, so it could be area damage, lightning damage if you're using lightning, fire damage if you're using fire, so on and so forth, spell damage, all of those things are very good to get, and car speed is really nice as well. You can actually double up and get a fair bit of car speed by doing things like getting car speed while holding a shield, or car speed while dual wielding in addition to basic car speed. You can also head out down this way, grab this jewel, and we also grab this life cluster just here, which is an excellent life cluster. You can grab this early. The order that I'm grabbing all these side bits, you can do in any order that you see fit. Whether you think you need more life, you come down here first, need more mana, get the mana nodes first, and so on. And if you don't have very good jewels yet, you can hold off until getting those much later on. And of course, we do pick up this endurance charge just here. With Warlord's Mark, we have no problem maintaining endurance charges all of the time. And there you have the base tree. You actually have a lot of options for scaling beyond here though, so if you do decide to stick with this character long term and move into the 80s and maybe even 90s, then you could do things like pick up the Shadow Start for even more damage. You get a lot of damage scaling from here on out. Not going that way, but going up through this way. You can actually pick up this Lightning Cluster as well, and you could even go into the Witch Start if you're going Lightning. Obviously, if you're going Fire, then you'll go Fire and Cold and so on and heading down through. I uh, think I prefer the car speed on this side. You can grab the witch start as well. You can also have the option of alternatively coming out this way and grabbing this cluster, which is actually pretty damn nice, grabbing that just there as well. I would probably grab the shadow start and this and then the witch stuff later on because it's not quite as valuable as the shadow start and the Templar side over there. This passive skill tree will be linked down in the description below so you can browse through and see uh, the baseline passive skill tree. As for the Ascendancy class, the very first thing you'll want to get when you do the Labyrinth in Normal will be Illuminated Devotion. Keep an eye out for my Labyrinth Guide as well if you're unsure of how to proceed with that or how to get into the Labyrinth. Then I recommend getting Divine Guidance in Cruel for that Mind Over Matter effect. And Merciless, you actually have a bit of a choice. You can go with Sanctuary of Thought, which converts your very high mana pool into Energy Shield, or it gives you added Energy Shield. Now, with the Energy Shield scaling we get from over the Witch Shadow area here, as well as just having a bit of like Armor ES, ES, or Evasion ES gear, then you can actually end up with a decent amount of Energy Shield. Now, Might Over Matter and Energy Shield don't really go together super well, but just having a big pool of Energy Shield on top of your life that didn't really take much investment is still extra survivability, so it's not a bad idea. So you can grab Sanctuary of Thought. Alternatively, if you're using a slower spellcasting setup that hits less enemies, then it might be a good idea instead to go Conviction of Power, which gives you Power Charge on Kill. It also gives you some Endurance Charge generation as well, though you should have plenty of Endurance Charges from your Warlord's Mark. But that Power Charge on Kill will be enough to just give you a little bit of a Power Charge boost just with your basic three Power Charges to be able to maintain that Elemental Overload uptime. So the choice is yours between these two. My showcase setup for this build is Stormcall. The skill is at its strongest it's ever been, and it's pretty easy to play now, with a nice balance between single target and AoE damage. If you're unsure which elemental AoE skill you want to use, then go with this one. We use Stormcall in our helmet for the bonus 20% lightning penetration, and link it to Echo for a huge car speed buff, Control Destruction for a big consistent damage boost, and less duration to boost the damage and to make the skill easier to use. The new Lightning skill Orb of Storms also goes great in this setup, and can be used for utility or as a damage boost. Currently I have Orb of Storms in my globs for the 20% AoE, and they're linked to both Herald of Thunder, Curse on Hit, and Warlord's Mark. This setup ensures that all enemies are cursed, granting 2% life and mana leech. Amazing for Mind Over Matter builds like this. It also grants a consistent supply of Endurance Charges to keep you even tankier. Alternatively, you could link Orb of Storms in your boots, granting 2% bonus life leech, and link it to Lightning Penetration, Added Lightning, and Innovate. This will help you deal more damage, heal you up, and boost your overall speed. Recommended auras are Herald of Thunder, Arctic Armor, and Clarity, a nice mix of survivability and damage. It's also a great idea to run a Vile Stormcall setup. I typically use Echo, Lightning Penetration, and Controlled Destruction in a Fall Link. From here you have a lot of free gem slots to play around with, use whatever utility skills you want. You could run a totem for some more damage, or you could use a castman damage taken setup. I'm using one link to a golem and molten shell for convenience. If you're not really into Stormcall or just want to mix it up, because with this build you can actually just play one setup for a while and then get bored and then play a different setup and then play another setup, check out the gem links on screen to give you some ideas for other setups you could be running. 
Just keep in mind that if you use a cold spell, you should instead of using Orb of Storms, use the new Frost Bomb skill to lower enemy cold resistance and add some more damage. However, if you're going for a fire build, you don't have an equivalent option at the moment, so I recommend using Orb of Storms with a utility setup instead. So guys, as always, if you have any questions about this build or the expansion, feel free to ask in the comments below. That is it for now, I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.